Hey everyone and welcome back. So before we begin here today, uh, just please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel. So we're going to be solving this problem shown on the left here. And what we have here are two cables that are tied together at point C and they are loaded as shown with this point P at this angle here. Well, that point P or that load P is 500 newtons and that angle is 60 degrees off the horizontal. And we are tasked with determining the tension that occurs in this cable AC and this cable BC. So this is an equilibrium problem. And like most equilibrium problems, the first thing you wanna do is you want to set up your free body diagram. So I'm just gonna go ahead and form an X and Y coordinate system here. And I'm going to make point C my origin point because that's where all the cables connect, which there's only two, and where that force is acting on. So it's like at the center of everything that is happening. So I'm going to make point C right here my origin point. And then I'm just going to apply all my known forces that I have acting on point C. Well, we really only have one. And it is that P force, which is 500 Newtons. And it is at an angle off of the X here at 60 degrees. So I'm also going to have to put on my tension forces with these cables. Now, since P is pulling down, uh, these cable forces will be trying to snap back and they're gonna be pulling in tension in the opposite direction. So I'm going to apply those right here and I'm just going to call AC FAC for the force in AC and it looks like it is 45 degrees off the horizontal so 45 degrees off the horizontal and then I'm going to have BC which once again I'm just going to label it as FBC you can label whatever you want as long as you stay consistent throughout the problem it's perfectly fine and it is shown to be 25 degrees off the horizontal, so 25 degrees off of the x-axis. And that is my free body diagram. And if you're ever wondering, some people like to actually abbreviate it and show it FBD for free body diagram. And since we have this free body diagram set up, we have all our information has been translated over to it. So we really don't need this original picture anymore. It's kind of nice to have, but we can use our free body diagram to solve this equilibrium problem. And that's kind of the point of the free body diagram is that you simplify everything down from a picture form into a more problematic, not really problematic, but a more problem oriented format here. So with um, equilibrium problems. Once you draw your free body diagram, there should be known forces, which we have one at 500 newtons, and there should be unknown forces, which we have two at this point, FAC and FBC, which that's what we're looking for. If you're not sure what your next step, uh, step or steps will be with equilibrium problems after drawing the free body diagram, a good point to start at would be using your summation equations of summing forces in the y direction and summing forces in the x direction. Now, since we are in equilibrium here, meaning nothing is moving, the summation of forces in the vertical direction, which is the y, and summation of forces in the horizontal direction, which is the x, should all sum to be zero in their relative directions. So that's what we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and let's write out these equations. So I'm gonna start with the Y direction and I'm gonna take all my forces in the vertical direction, be positive and everything in the downward direction or upward vertical is positive and then everything in the downward direction would be negative. So we have a couple of components that we have to determine here because all our known and unknown forces are angles. So that means that each of these forces known and unknown will have components in the X and Y directions which is not super difficult to determine which way these uh, components are going for each one. So let's start with the 500 first. So the 500 is going down and to the left. So my components will be down in the Y direction and to the left in the X direction. FAC is going up and to the left. So its components will be going upwards and to the left. And then the same process for FBC, it's going up and to the right. So its Y component will be upward and its X component will be to the right. 
So filling in our y equation, let's start with FAC first. Well, our um, component in FAC will be going upward since it's up and to the left, so it's positive. And then we have to multiply it by um, something to get it into the y direction. Well, we're going to use this angle right here of 45 degrees, and it's actually going to be times the sine of 45 degrees. <clears throat> Because you're using sine and cosine when you have angles telling you where your forces are, cosine is adjacent, sine is opposite. Since the y is opposite the 45 degree angle because the angle is off of the x, you would use sine with y. And since the angle is off of the x, you're going to use cosine because the x is adjacent to that angle. So there's FAC. And then let's get the FBC component here. So we're going to write FBC. It's going to be positive because the component is upward. And this one will also be sine of the angle associated with FBC, which is sine of 25 degrees. And then same methodology here. The 25 is attached to the X or coming off of the X. So the X will be associated with cosine. The Y direction is opposite the angle because it's not touching the angle. So that is sine. And then lastly, we have our known force. Well, its component is going in the downward direction, so that's minus. So we have minus 500 newtons. And this one will also be sine of the angle associated with the 500. Because the 60 is off of the x, it is opposite the y. And that's all we have in the y direction. So all of those will have to cancel to be 0. So we really can't solve for anything here just yet because, well, we have FACs unknown and FBC still unknown in this equation. So anytime you cannot solve directly for a variable using one of your equilibrium equations, just go to the next one. So we're going to the X next. And just like with the Y, everything in the horizontal direction needs to sum to be zero. We're going to take everything that is pointed to the right as positive. Everything to the left is a negative value. So let's just start with like terms first. So we're going FAC first. And this one will be pointed left. So it's minus. And this time it will be cosine of 45 degrees because the angle is off of the X. And then going with FBC, it's pointed to the right. So it's positive FBC. And once again, this will be cosine of the angle 25 degrees. <clears throat> because the angle is off of the x, so that will be cosine, which is adjacent. And then minus that 500 newtons of force times cosine of 60 degrees, because the angle is off the x, so it's cosine once again. And that's all we have in the x direction, so all of those will have to cancel with each other to be zero. Well, looking at each equation by itself, we can't solve for, for FAC or FBC. But we can use both of these equations together to solve for our unknowns. Now, since we have our equilibrium equations here, we really don't need our free body diagram anymore because we have transformed that free body diagram into uh, equilibrium equations. So what we're going to do is we are going to get one of our unknowns in terms of the other and then plug it into the opposite equation so that we have one variable per equation. And you can start with either one you want, looking at the X or looking at the Y. But for this one, I am going to start with the summation of X. So I'm going to looking, I'm looking at this X equation right here, the blue one. So from this equation, I am going to take everything um, uh, in terms of FAC. So I'm going to start with FBC is equal to something. So let's go ahead and take FAC to the opposite side and let's take the 500 to the opposite side so they are positive. So what I am having left here is FBC times the cosine of 25 is equal to FAC times the cosine of 45 plus 500 newtons times the cosine of 60. Then I'm just going to take everything and divide by cosine of 25. That way I am left with just FBC is equal to some value. So dividing through by cosine of 25, I have FAC cosine of 45 over the cosine of 25 
plus the 500 times the cosine of 60 over the cosine of 25. So just making everything in a decimal form here, because it'll be much easier to work with, 45 or the cosine of 45 divided by the cosine of 25 gives me 0 0.78 times FAC. And that's going to be plus the cosine of 60 divided by the cosine of 25 multiplied by 500 gives me a total of 275.84. So this is my FBC equation. And this is telling me what FBC is equal to in terms of FAC. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to take, let's use a color I haven't used yet. So I am going to take that, that's supposed to be purple. It looks blue, but that's supposed to be purple. Um, I'm going to take this FBC and I am going to plug it back in to the Y equation for FBC up here. Since I use the X to get this equation, I have to plug it back into the other equation, which is the Y up here. And then everything will be in terms of FAC. So from my Y equation, after plugging in this new FBC value right here, this is what I have. And let me scroll just a little bit here. So I have the original FAC times the sine of 45 does not change. And then I have plus what I have here for FBC plugged in, so it's going to be 0 0.78 FAC plus 275.84. All of that's going to be multiplied by the sine of 25 and then minus the 500 newtons times the sine of 60. And all that has to be equal to zero. So looking at this equation, the only unknown that I have in here is now FAC. It's in two separate parts. That means we have to combine like terms. So let's make this equation a little bit easier here. So what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to show here, is most of these sines of 45s, cosines and sines all over the place. There's no cosines in this one, just sines. I'm just going to form it all into decimal form so it's easier to work with. So sine of 45. That gives me 0 0.707 times FAC. And then taking the 0 0.78, multiplying it by the sine of 25, I get plus 0 0.329 FAC. And once again, that just comes from 0 0.78 times sine 25. And then plus the 275.84 times sine of 25 gives me 116.6. And then minus 500 times the sine of 60 gives me 433 equal to zero. All right, so let's combine FAC here. And let's take this of 43 or 433 and the 116.6, take it to the other side. So 0 0.707 plus 0 0.392 gives me 1.036 FAC. And then on the other side, it would be a positive uh, 433 minus 116.6. And that gives me a positive 316.4. Well, I just can divide by uh, 1.036 on each side. So 316.4 divided by 1.036. That gives me a value for FAC of 305.4 Newtons in that general upward left direction. And there's one of my answers. So there's one of the cable forces. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to take this value that I got for FAC and I'm going to plug it back up here so that I can get FBC then. So FBC is going to be 0 0.78 times that value for FAC that I just got of 305.4 Newtons plus the 275, oh, must be a five there. Two hundred seventy-five point eight four. 
And that will give me a value of 514.1 newtons in that upward right direction. And there are my two cable forces that I was asked to determine with the start of this problem. <clears throat> so with all equilibrium uh, problems, you can always double check your answers. And the way you do this is that you just take your answers that I have for FAC and FBC and plug them back into the original summation equations and see if you get close to zero. Now, if you rounded 100% correctly, you would get zero as your final answer for the equilibrium equations. But because there is rounding and no one rounds 100% perfect out there, even though they may say they do, they, there's no possible way, unless you're a computer, you're going to get somewhere close to zero. It may not be exactly zero. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So <clears throat> this is what I'm going to plug back into my X equation. So I have minus FAC, which is 305.4 times the cosine of 45. And then plus FBC, which is 514.1 times the cosine of 25. And then minus that 500 cosine of 60 from point P or force P. And theoretically, yeah, this should equal zero for equilibrium. But in reality, this is what it equals. Zero, negative 0 0.02. Is that close enough? Yes, that's close enough. because. You have to use a judgment call here. Our answers are 305 and 514. 0 0.02 is such a small percentage of these values that that is close enough to zero. And it's just rounding that is making that non-zero. So that is okay in my book. So... That's how you find um, those two cable forces for that particular problem. So I hope this was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved of this variety, uh, please check out other videos on our channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.